right, here are some strong content takeaways, things that you want to consider for your own resume if you don't have it already. Number one, one to two pages, no more than two pages. It sh I should not, I've never seen a resume over two pages that needed to be over two pages. Professional, and if you're a new teacher, by the way, one more thing on that, if you're a new teacher, one page. You don't need more than that. Professional email address. This should go without saying, but this is just something that people sometimes don't think about, is just make sure you're not using, you know, like, I'm trying to think of what my, Dizzy Liz 6464 or something, you know, some, one of those silly little email accounts that you have or flirty email account, perhaps just make sure that it's a professional email address. This stuff actually does matter. If when possible, especially if you have been doing resumes for a little while, see if you can qualitatively or quantitatively support what you're saying. So in other words, if you're talking about your students and how, um, and the progress that they've made, talk about their increase in, um, the increase in students that pass the region or the um, percentage of ELLs who were at grade level at the end of the year in reading, for example. I'm just making things up, but just um, as specific as possible, you wanna just support that you basically did your job, that you did a, a good job. You wanna obviously highlight your strengths and your accomplishments as much as possible. Reverse chronological order. So your most recent position should go first and then continue in that order. This is, a, this is something that a lot of people don't know, even people that have been doing resumes for a long time. You don't need to include your, resume, your references, first of all. You can say either references available upon request or you can say nothing at all. And if they want resumes, then if they want references, um, then you can send them to them. But you don't need to put the names and phone numbers of your references on your resume. You don't know who this resume, who's seeing this resume, and how many hands it's going to. Sometimes it's, it's printed, right? And it's on a desk somewhere. Like you don't need, um, you don't need that information out there. Same thing goes with your address. And this is new, but um, if you think about it, why do they need your address? And I still included mine until very recently, um, but this day and age, I mean, that's not, they don't, they're not gonna mail you anything, right? Do they need to know where you live? Maybe they would need to, they, they'd like to know, you know, if the school is in the Bronx, they might rule out somebody who lives in Staten Island or New Jersey, but do you even want that, right? You wanna be considered for every possible position. So you actually don't need to include your address, little known fact, or references. Three to six bullet points for each position, no less and probably no more, unless you've maybe had a position for many, many years. I've seen some decent resumes that have had many more bullet points than that. Just see if you can make three to six work. Definitely not less. And, and more than six, for the record, is just positions that you've had for a long time where you had multiple responsibilities that can't be consolidated into six bullet points, okay? Just try to avoid saying really, obvious or expected things that every single teacher does, right? You don't need to talk about how you graded homework or how you taught, right? <laughs> or how you graded papers or assessed students. You can talk about how you did those things if you feel like it's important, but you're not gonna, don't just say what you did without any further details as to why that's important and valuable information. I, I've stressed this many times, but I'll stress it one more time. Make sure that your certification is highly visible on your resume, right at the top, um, in its own section, if possible, bolded. Just make sure that they can see it right when they look at it. The name of the certification, the, the grades that are covered by the certification, the state, and the title. I'm missing something. Oh, the dates that the dates that it's covered, the dates that you were certified. You don't have to put the actual date, you could just put the year, but just all the information about your certification. And then avoid the first person. Most people know that, but if you're brand new, I'm just trying to make sure that we cover that because it's super important. Do not use the first person. No eyes in your resume. 
even in your objective. 